And what we have pulled up here uh, and the topics we'll be covering today is the five steps to develop an option trading plan. Uh, and anybody can view this uh, information on Fidelity's website. This is in our learning center and I'll show everyone how to get here in just a, a few moments. Um, but we'll start out with the uh, first step which is getting started. Uh, this is where we're going to focus on some of the educational material that we have out there. And the bulk of our session today will focus on steps two and three here. Uh, we want to talk about generating ideas and we're going to actually go through and show you some of the tools out there for finding strategies and finding underlyings that may be appropriate for certain uh, options ideas that you have. Uh, the make a plan section here, we're actually going to talk about the analysis uh, behind some of the selections, right? As option traders, uh, it's not enough just to pick a strategy. We have to dive into it, decide which strikes we want to choose, which expirations and understand the trade-offs uh, that each of these have. So we're going to walk through a few of the uh, tools uh, in that area and give you some great ideas there too. Uh, and finally, once you've uh, maybe had the, uh, the right idea, have the strategy in mind, uh, how do we actually place a trade? We're going to spend some time in Active Trader Pro, show you how to quickly uh, set up trades, talk about some of the different order types and issues with liquidity to consider with options as well. Uh, and then we'll finish it up with step five or monitor uh, the trade, right? Once we have this trade on, you know, with, the, with options or anything really, it's important that we're managing that trade along the way, right? Uh, we'd like to hope that uh, everything goes right all the time, but we are going to run into situations where uh, maybe price moves against us or we're facing a losing trade. You know, how do we think about that and how do we uh, manage that trade in, in those situations? So. Uh, so we'll go ahead. I want to jump into to get started here and talk a little bit about the education at Fidelity. Um, before we do, if you don't mind, I just want a quick show of hands. How many of you have actually placed an options trade before? Oh, great. So we've got a lot of uh, a lot of experienced traders in here. Excellent. Well, one of the things, and I know certainly a few of you are new, that's uh, important with options. You know, you're not going to learn everything there is to know in, in a day or, or one class. Uh, so one of the big focuses uh, here at Fidelity is the continuing education uh, that we have uh, on options. Uh, so I want to point out to everybody uh, our learning center uh, here at Fidelity. And I'm going to walk everyone through the actual steps to get, uh, get through this uh, resource here. It's under the research menu uh, and then the learning center here. And uh, when this pulls up, uh, I want to focus first on our, our uh, upcoming webinars, right? Uh, so every month we do a number of webinars on various topics, but options is certainly a big area of focus. Uh, we do about two to three uh, sessions every month. We'll focus on specific strategies. We'll even bring outside experts in to talk about different uh, option strategies and options outlook. And you'll find this information over on the uh, right hand side. Uh, we also record the majority of these sessions. So if you do see something uh, upcoming that interests you and you uh, don't happen to make it, uh, that session will be archived in our archive webinars uh, section here as well so you can come back and enjoy the, uh, the recordings. You know, but more importantly uh, here for those of you that are uh, just starting out or those that may need help along the way, um, Mike had mentioned this before but uh, his team and my team can work with everyone one on one uh, here throughout the way. So if you, you know, find yourself uh, learning about a new strategy and you want to have that conversation. Make sure you're comfortable with the risk and, and reward. Make sure you have a full understanding. Uh, or maybe hear our opinion if there's a, a better idea or a better way to consider it. You know, we'd have that uh, conversation with you here as well. Um, and finally too, uh, before you get started, uh, first and foremost, uh, obviously we do have to have an account. If you don't have a Fidelity account and you're interested in signing up for one, uh, that's something certainly we can help you out with the, uh, the booth here today. You know, for options trading, for those of you that haven't actually uh, signed up or done it before, uh, keep in mind there is an application for approval. Very quick, you can do it all online. Uh, we've got that listed in this uh, guide here as well. Um, so with that, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, switch over to step two, generate ideas. This is where we're really going to start to dive into the tools and, and talk about some of the steps uh, to creating that plan. And I'll uh, introduce Robert to take us through the uh, next few steps here. Well, I like seeing that show of hands for uh, people already trading options. So thanks for, thanks for joining. And I want to preface that we decided to host this particular topic because this really can be the difference between inconsistent and, and long-term success when trading options. All right. So I saw the show of hands of people who traded options. I'm going to ask a slightly different question. Uh, my colleague Trey and Constantine the other day hosted an options for income and they covered two kind of what I consider maybe strategies that people start off with, covered calls and cash covered puts. Uh, does anybody trade those particular strategies in here? Okay, terrific. Let me ask you a more particular question. Does anybody only trade covered calls or cash covered puts? Okay. 
right? And a gentleman came up here um, right before the show and kind of asked some questions. Hey, I'm just getting started. What do you think? So I want to make sure we're kind of in the right mindset of really what we do as, as traders, okay? And the first thing we don't want to do, okay, is approach something with kind of like a biased mindset. And the analogy I like to use to kind of hammer that point home is, you know, imagine, you know, imagine you're a, uh, you know, you're a car enthusiast, right, or a mechanic, or you like building, you have a toolbox. It's got a hundred tools in it, okay? But imagine just every time you do something, you just grab the hammer and you look for things to hit with a hammer, right? Sounds kind of silly, right? So what we want to do as traders is identify what we're trying to accomplish, right? I wear glasses, right? You need that microscopic screwdriver, right, to fix your glasses sometimes. And if you don't have the tool, right, you might not be able to get anything done. Right? If, you, if there's a nail sticking out, you grab the hammer. If there's a screw, you need a screwdriver. If there's a bolt, you need a wrench. Okay? We don't start with the tool. You got to start with what you're trying to accomplish. Okay? So when you learn a strategy, maybe it worked out for you. Maybe somebody told you that, hey, this is the strategy you should be doing. Okay? There is no strategy that always works. Okay? There is nothing that will always be successful. Okay, so I told the gentleman when he came up here, he said, what do you think? What we do is we help you understand when and where you might want to use that strategy or a different strategy. So when we're talking about generating ideas, we need to understand, well, what else is out there? How other, what are other ways or what are some ways that we can try to take advantage of what we think might occur? So the first link here is to our option strategy guide, okay? So what we've done here is we've partnered, okay, CBOE and a couple of our friends over in our product group, and we've given a brief description of all the well-known strategies, and you can see there's quite a few of them, okay? Here you might recognize as I scroll through. Anybody here trade spreads? Spread traders? Okay. Anybody here only trade spreads? Right. You never want to automatically do anything with trading. Okay, if you're automatically doing something, that means you're not thinking. Okay, so what we can do here is, listen, I know there's a lot. Whenever you start something new, okay, it can be very intimidating, right? But again, you can't kind of ride a bicycle, all right? You either know what you're doing and why you're doing it, okay, okay or you don't, right? So we got to put ourselves in the best position to be successful from the front, okay? You wouldn't, you know, if you're, if you're buying a car, you do the research, you comparison shop, right? Anything else that involves your money that you've worked hard for, you put the time in to make sure you're making the best decision possible. You don't want to rush into something like this. Educate yourself. That's what we help with. Just to give an example, right? We had uh, covered calls. Okay. So if you're brand new to options trading, this is going to be a tremendous resource for you. It'll explain how to construct the trade. Okay, this is, this is that kind of introduction that you might read in an intro to options book. Buy the stock, sell the call, okay? But more importantly, after it talks about the profit you can make, the risk, okay, that's involved, the break-evens, all that at expiration stuff, okay, we call these the P&L diagrams. When would you want to do this? Okay, so this is where our guide really starts helping you out, okay? What's the appropriate market forecast for a covered call? Right? It's neutral to bullish. More significantly, you just don't want the stock to go down. Same thing with just owning stock. Okay? However, what if you think a stock really has potential? Could possibly skyrocket. Your answer should not be a covered call. Because if you're right, you don't benefit from that. You sold your upside away for that money in your pocket. You're still making the money, okay? So we want to make sure that we decide what we think first, okay, before reaching for the tool instead of just using the tool all the time. And conversely, what if a stock starts going down, right? I'm sure uh, some of our uh, 
you know, colleagues in the industry, right, they'll tell you, just write some covered calls, it'll lower your basis, right? Which it will, it can. But it can't avoid loss if the stock keeps going down, okay? It can't save a stock that just, in a long-term downtrend. You might lose less, right? Has anybody here done that, wrote in a call against the stock, try to recover? What does the market do to you, right? Then it starts to rally, right? So you lost the money on the way down, you got a little money in your pocket, and then it rallies, right? But that is the ideal strategy. You're making the most for that strategy, but you feel like it's a loss, right? Because you're just trying to force that situation. It should always be, stock should be roughly neutral. Covered calls, generate income, and so forth, okay? So if you only know a couple of tools in the toolbox, you should absolutely start there expanding your knowledge. What other tools are available? If I'm really bullish, what's the right strategy, right? If I'm kind of bullish, what's, what if I'm bearish? What if I'm neutral, okay? So how do we decide where we're gonna try to find opportunity, okay? So one of the things that we can do is start with maybe stocks you either already own, right, or stocks that you follow, okay? But Fidelity does want to provide you with all the opportunity to know kind of what's out there. One of our partners is S&P, okay? So if you do do covered calls and you say, hey, listen, maybe I don't have the time or even the desire to really find all these opportunities on my own, okay? You can certainly, okay, see what somebody else has to offer and give, give you a suggestion. And what I'd like to do now is show you, okay, in our options research, how you can find some of these, again, idea generation. In the end, the trade's either gonna work or it's not gonna work, right? But they have a methodology, combines both fundamental and technical factors, and it gives you some information. So if you go to research options, Okay. And we go over to market overview. Okay. And right on the left side, it's going to give you from an annualized return perspective some suggestions. And we can just maybe even pick the one on top, take a closer look at what they're doing. Okay. So it has some criteria. Do you want in the money, out of the money, both? They have their ranking. And right down here, it gives you the actual trade. So it's literally telling you what to do, okay? But here's the thing. This trade's either gonna work or it's not gonna work, right? Based on their methodology, they think this is a good suggestion. So if you just go on autopilot and just click the button to place this trade, that's not trading, okay? You need to understand why might they do this? Do you agree? Because if the trade stops working, what are you gonna do next? Right? It gives you the risk reward profile. It gives you your break even point, right? But don't throw out your own process, right? If you like this stock or you have a certain methodology of how you identify what stocks to trade or invest in, okay? Just do a click, just click on this PDF. And it gives you the details of their, met of their methodology, okay? Right? So again, you can start with your own ideas, if that's more your thing. Again, start with your own basket of stocks, or we have tools to help you find right, your own ideas. How many people here uh, use our stock screener, or use a stock screener to try to find, right? Options markets have characteristics that you can screen for as well, right? You can do a custom scan, or we have some suggestions on popular criteria, right? You wanna make sure maybe there's enough liquidity. Is there a burst in volume, right? Anybody watch uh, the news? They always mentioned uh, unusual options activity, kind of draws their attention. You can scan for things like that, right? Volatility, it's an important concept in, in options trading, okay? 
So when you're deciding what strategy to use, what you're trying to find, there's three things minimum you need to decide. The stock trading is difficult as it can be sometimes. It can either go up or down. Simple as that. If you're bullish, you buy the stock. If you're bearish, you short it or sell it. But how do you decide what strategy to trade with options? You need to put numerical specifics into your guesses. Okay, to say why am I doing this strategy? So say a stock's trading at $100, you think it's going up, you buy the stock. Okay, that is not sufficient to be able to answer what's the option strategy to take advantage of that. You need to decide, it's at 100, I think it's going to 105, 110. The why doesn't matter, you get to pick that. Okay, we're gonna go over that in our tools in the next step. Okay, but you must decide what you think is going to happen and when. Okay. And a third component, volatility. We're not going to dive too much into that today, but please join us tomorrow. If you're not factoring in volatility into your option trades, okay, it's, it's not even an option. Okay, you have to understand how that affects options pricing. So the three components, you must make decisions. Once you do, leads to potential strategy. The last part is what type of risk are you comfortable with? Do you want defined risk? Are you okay with unlimited risk? And that's gonna lead you to a couple of strategies, right? So what we're gonna do now, okay, is we're going to transition to our Active Trader Pro platform. So if you're already using this, hopefully you're aware of these tools. If not, we're gonna show them now. And right before quick we get there, the notebook. Okay, it's a new feature we added just so you can easily, uh, an easy way to keep track of what your thoughts, what your trade ideas were at the time. If you are not reviewing your past trades, I strongly encourage you to start doing that. Okay, we need to learn from our mistakes. What can we do to make the better trading decision going forward? Okay, to do that, we need to be specific. It can't be fuzzy, right? We can't define ourselves by, I made money, so that was a winning trade. You can have a losing trade and it be successful if it's stuck to your plan and you controlled the risk the way you defined it from the start. Okay, so again, what we're gonna do now is we are going to switch over to our trading platform. Okay. Anybody in here already use Active Trader Pro? Okay. Terrific. Right. So, however you make your guess on what the stock's going to do, okay? I'm sorry. So however you make your guess, you get to decide that. That's what's great about it. If I put a deck of cards on this table, right, what would you ask? You'd say, what game are we playing? Because that defines the rules. If you have experience playing the game, you might have your own strategy, right? We need to create rules on how we make these decisions, okay? So what we're gonna focus now is on Active Trader Pro, okay, if you go up to options at the top, you'll see a list of different things you can select. So the first thing you're going to select is the probability calculator. It's a stock everybody's interested in these days, Apple. Take a look at Apple, okay. So one of the things that many traders use is the probability, the mathematical probability of a, pr a stock reaching a certain price or staying within a certain price and so forth. All right, and it's based off volatility. So if you look at this screen right here, it pre-fills the target price, okay, with whatever Apple's trading at. Looks like it's up about half a percent today. It also pre-fills this volatility number. Anybody in here already using probability in their options trading decisions? Okay, see a couple hands. We're determining this number. Now, what many people do is, well, what has the stock behaved like in the past, right? So HV 90 day, what that means is historical volatility for the past 90 trading days. And if you annualized it, this is its one standard deviation number, okay? You can pick a different look back period. It might have been more volatile a long time ago, less volatile recently. You can put your own number in there. Okay, but whatever number you put in there is gonna drive the math. Okay. And what you can do at that point is saying, hey, given something that, that has a variation of this amount, what's the likelihood 
that it reaches a certain price. Okay? And you can make any price you want, right? maybe 150. Right? Now, if you have today's date as your evaluation date, the chance it's going to go to 150 mathematically is probably pretty small. Right? But you can pick a date in the future to evaluate. Say, hey, what's the likelihood it gets to a date this price by, say, March? Right? And you'll notice if I put a different number in here, say Apple for some reason gets more volatile, okay? Okay, you should change the math a little bit, okay? But what you'll notice at the bottom here, let me maximize this for everybody, is that we've already given you all the option expiration dates automatically. So whenever you put a symbol in here, if it has an option series, it's going to give you those as the evaluation date, so you can just do a quick gauge, right? So again, if you use probabilities, you want to get an idea of what it might look like, okay, you can start with this tool. But now I'd like to transition to what I think is honestly our most valuable tool, okay, that's our profit loss calculator. Okay. So what you can do here is you can see what your trade might look like in a variety of scenarios. And one of the first things you need to do is you need to decide, what am I trying to achieve with this trade? Obviously the easy answer is I'm trying to make money. But what we want to turn that into is a risk reward type of situation. How much money am I risking to try to make this potential reward? And if you don't know what the trade's going to look like in the future, you can't do that. Right? Now at expiration, options trading is actually very simple. Your option is either worthless or it's worth its intrinsic value. Right? But what is the trade going to look like before expiration? Okay. Options don't behave in sync with stock. Okay. Dep it depends on what you call the moneyness. So you heard the terms out of the money, in the money, at the money. Right? They behave differently. How much time is left? Longer dated options behave differently than shorter dated options. Right? So how on earth are we supposed to make choices when we have so many choices to pick from? If you can say, I think this stock is going from this price to this price by this date, and again, I think this is what's going to happen to implied volatility, which is basically demand for that option, you can then answer the question, what is the best thing to do, if you're correct? So what this will do is if you already have a trade in the security, at the bottom here, it'll show it. But you can also add simulated positions for trades you're thinking about doing. Okay, right here. Just like a trade ticket, don't be afraid. It's not gonna send a trade in for you, okay? Trade's gonna talk about that in a second. But it allows you to model and really go through a variety of scenarios. So it looks like somebody already put in a spread in here from before. Okay. And looks like this is a June 130, 135 bullish call spread. Okay. We can also look at the legs individually. Okay. The evaluation price here, that's like what you, your basis would be on a real trade, right? And you can control that, right? The actual price is, well, the market's open right now, right? The market determines the price. Don't forget that, just like stock. Here's the theoretical price. So options pricing doesn't, just doesn't come out of nowhere, right? There's option pricing models. This one uses Black Shoals. I'm not sure if anybody has ever heard those names before, right? And it says, hey, listen, given where the stock is, given how much time is left, given what we think implied volatility, or AKA demand is going to be, this is roughly what this thing should be trading at, right? So we can plug in any date, we, so we can plug in our scenario maybe. Maybe it's bullish, right? One, five, zero, right? Pick a date, right? They expire in uh, June, okay? You can, you know, we had March in there, Change to March 30th. Okay, and just to keep it straightforward, I will leave implied volatility unchanged, but again, we will cover why that's not really realistic tomorrow. But take a look at that column, the theoretical price, right? 
that's how you can say, hey, if this thing happens much earlier than expected than June, how much money am I actually going to make, right? Because right now, it's well above my 135 call price, so I know that's good. But now you have, if you want to get the rest of the money, you got to wait a couple more months. Now that it's already made this move, do you, would you still want to do that? Would you put this trade on as is at that point in time, right? Because the thing about options trading is your position is always changing because the options have expiration dates, right? So if you buy one month's options, okay, two months later, uh, two weeks later, it's a two-week option, right? So it's not the same position anymore, right? So these are the types of tools, these are the types of things that should be part of your process. If they're not, okay, this can definitely help you achieve more consistency, in my personal opinion. Okay, and to get to actually placing some trades, all right, Trey's going to take over for a moment and kind of walk you through that process. Yeah, and one other thing to add on, on this tool here also before I um, do a demonstration of placing trades, you know, a lot of the, one of the most common questions we get is, you know, what's better? What's the best strike? What's the best expiration? Which one should I choose? You know, this tool does a great way of allowing you to compare, right? If you wanted to, you know, look at this spread but then compare it to a March spread, right, you can put them both in here. Uh, put in the, uh, your expected price, put in some different dates, right, and actually get a, a good feel for how each of those positions are going to behave. So um, as Robert mentioned, really one of the, the best tools here can add a lot to your planning. Um, but let's say you've now gone through these first uh, few steps here, right? You found, uh, found an idea, you've had a chance to model and, and plan it out in the profit loss calculator. Uh, let's say you're ready to go ahead and place the trade. So I want to show you a few different ways that we can do that in Active Trader Pro. Uh, tools are going to be very similar on Fidelity.com. One of the main benefits of, of Active Trader Pro, uh, however, is, is our speed uh, for actually getting an order in, uh, how quickly we can go from any of these screens to getting a trade set up, but also streaming data, right, with options. Um, we're going to see price changes uh, very, very quickly uh, depending on what um, uh, option you may be looking at, you want to always have that most up to date information. So you're going to get that with Active Trader Pro. Uh, I will bring up too, you can actually place trades directly from this profit loss. So if you've gone through here, you've planned it out, you think this is the, uh, the right opportunity for you, uh, you'll notice this little drop down menu uh, that'll allow you to go right into the uh, trade strategy. All right, and this is going to bring up the uh, trade ticket for us. And it's already going to pre-fill the information for us. So right here, uh, we have our buy to open, our sell to open, uh, number of contracts uh, entered in here uh, is one. You can actually change the defaults in Active Trader Pro if you always do one contract or ten contracts. Uh, if not, uh, you can actually make the uh, adjustment right here. Uh, I want to bring up too, uh, really, I'd say where a lot of uh, option traders tend to go first is to take a look at the uh, the option chains as one of the uh, main tools uh, that will be at your disposal that you'll be using. We'll stick with this example of uh, Apple here. Uh, you know, Robert kind of brought up a, a moment ago, you know, understanding Black Shoals uh, and the Greeks. The profit loss calculator does all the math for us, but if you do like to actually look at the individual Greeks, you can add these onto your option chain here just by right clicking and adding or removing uh, those columns. Um, but once we have the option chain pulled up, you know, very, very easy. Let's say, for example, we decided we wanted to, uh, to buy a call uh, on Apple. Uh, once again, all we have to do is once we pick that uh, uh, strike price we're looking at, is just click on the uh, click on the ask price. Right? It'll ask us to choose an account here. You can actually set these by default. And you notice right on our option chain, uh, we've got a trade ticket populated uh, right here for us. Right? Uh, so it allows us to really get that set up quickly. Uh, in this case, we've got it set up at a limit right at the ask price. If we wanted to get this order in quickly, right, just click that ask. We can preview and place the trade and get it right in. Right? So we know these prices are going to change uh, quickly. So you know, having that speed, getting in at the right time is, is very important. Uh, the other step we wanted to cover here in, in part four of actually placing the trade is understanding uh, commissions and trading fees. So at Fidelity, uh, your option costs are $7.95 plus 75 cents a contract. Uh, one of the other neat things, I know we had a few option sellers in here, right? You know, if you sell puts, for example, you know, how many of you ran into that situation where you, you sold a put, uh, you know, a month out, the stock has a big rise, and now we're looking at just a few cents left on that premium, right? It's a good problem to have, 
Um, but we have to remember with any selling strategy, right, the most we're ever going to make is that premium. Once it drops down to, to three or four cents, do you really want to hold on to that trade for the next couple of weeks? Uh, and a lot of traders don't realize that, uh, you know, you can take that risk off the table, take your profit by buying it back, but nobody wants to pay the, you know, $8 commission for doing so. So uh, we actually waive the commission on those buy to closes if the option contract is under 10 cents. So, uh, so it's a, a very good uh, advantage, really helpful for options traders. So. Um, you want to use that to your advantage and, and remember to perhaps take that uh, risk off the table here. Uh, so with that, we've got just a, a few moments left. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about one uh, last topic, which is actually monitoring uh, the trade along the way and managing the trade. So I'll hand it back to uh, Robert to close that off for us. Thank you, Trey. Let's do it in things. All right. So let's go back to the list here. All right. <coughs> All right, so congratulations, you placed a trade. Okay. I can't say this enough, that the decisions you make after the trade is placed is the most important part of your trade. Okay, let's simplify, simplify this to a stock trade. Okay, doesn't matter why you bought the stock, whether you use fundamental analysis, doesn't matter if you spent five months researching it versus maybe somebody else who looks at a, a chart it's on his watch list, he got some signals, looks like it's gonna go up. So person A buys 1,000 shares based on their in-depth research. Person B buys 1,000 shares based on his short-term setup. The why only matters to you. Again, creating how you make your trading decisions. Once your trade's open, you now have the exact same position. You have the same risk. You, you want the same things to happen. Okay, so when you're monitoring your options trade, the whole point of the planning was accepting this trade might not be one that makes money. Okay, that's how you define that risk versus reward. That's how you decide what size position should I use. If you knew what was going to happen for sure, you'd put every dollar you had, but you don't know. Nobody else knows for sure, believe me. Okay. So once you place your trade, okay, again, what, you should, what should you be doing? As I mentioned briefly before, your position with options is always changing. With stock, if you buy stock and nothing happens, okay, it doesn't help or hurt you. All you did was miss out on doing something else. Okay? If you need something to move in a certain direction, say go up, say you buy a you know, one month call option, right? if nothing happens for two weeks, it's a different trade. Okay, so you should always be thinking in terms of what's the best thing I can do at that moment and not holding on to is my position at a gain or a loss. I can tell you from personal experience that will paralyze your ability to make the best decision. You have to get out of that mindset. If you wouldn't open that particular trade, if it was a brand new trade at that moment in time for that price, but you do anyway, then you know your emotions are impacting your, your trading decision. Okay, you're always running against the clock with options trading, so you should always be monitoring them if possible. Now, the gentleman that walked up, he mentioned, hey, I might not have the time. I sit in front of and trade all day, right? But I know not, not everybody's in that situation, nor has the desire to do so, okay? So a couple of things you can do, probably pretty popular, is to you know, set alerts, right? If I can't watch it all the time, Right. So what you can do is you can set price alerts. Let's flip back to Active Trader Pro. You know, right from a chart. So say let's let's go to a just go to default chart and let's look at Apple. Okay. Right. Okay. Right click. Set price alert. It can be triggered by price movement, a change since close, a technical indicator called exponential moving average, or a very common thing that's talked about in news, uh, you know, if it's making a new one year high or low. Okay, so you don't maybe necessarily have to actively monitor it, but with your trading plan, you have an idea of what's going to trigger your action. And then let our tools tell you when to pay attention. Okay. 
But the most important part is you cannot be married to your original guesses. Right? We're in Florida, right? Lovely Orlando, then it's a beautiful place, right? Say you came down here to golf. Maybe you just assumed it was going to be nice weather because, you know, it's Orlando, right? Maybe you double checked the weather just in case, right? Spend a lot of money, call up all your friends, we're going to meet on this date and time, okay? But here's the thing, nobody controls the weather, right? So no matter they said it was going to be sunny two days ago or yesterday, if you get to the golf course and it starts pouring rain, what do you do in real life? You, you, you go do something else, well, except for some, uh, you know, hardcore, right? You got to react to what's actually happening. It doesn't matter why it's happening. That's the same thing with stock price, right? That's the same thing with, it's, it's, the price is the net result of everybody who's trading that thing at any given time. You can't control that. You can only guess at it, okay? The successful investor and trader, they focus it on the part of the trade they are in control of. What is my position at any given time? If you place a three-month trade, right, with an idea of three months, a month from now, I'm going to know one month's worth of price activity, news, and stuff that I didn't know at the, at the time, right? So there's probably a pretty decent chance maybe I changed my mind. Maybe I have slightly different expectations with this new information. And then the day after that, I'm going to have more and more and more. So you always look at your trade and say, does this trade still make the most sense? And you can keep track of it in our tools like the profit loss calculator. Okay. This is the type of stuff that Fidelity helps you with, right? Free, free trades, commission rates, right? We have our competitors, they have tools. I'm a trader. I wish I could call strategy desk when I was younger because the market teaches you some painful lessons sometimes, right? And that's what we help you with, right? Think back to when you learned how to drive a car, drive a car right? Your parents didn't hand you the manual to your car and say, good luck, right? They sat in the car with you and said, hey, listen, go easy on the gas. Right? It's going to react maybe a little bit different than you expect. Don't stab the brakes, right? That's what we're, we're not going to drive the car for you. We can't drive the car for you. But we can be that somebody that can help you along as you get comfortable to say, what am I trying to accomplish? Right? And that's the benefit of working with strategists and our brokerage consultants. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Trey. Um, so we've covered a lot of information just within the last 45 minutes. And for some of you, this is maybe validating what you're already doing. For others that are newer to option trading, uh, maybe it's bringing to light some of the tools and some of the concepts and some of the strategies that you haven't gotten to yet. And I think the big takeaway is just Think about where you are and, and where you want to be, because whether it's your, the, the, the strategy desk or whether it's you just setting up an appointment with your local regional brokerage consultant, and again, there's three of us that cover the, the Florida market, myself, Michael McCreary, uh, then we've got Heather Knight, and then also Scott Bassler. So in your local Florida branches, if you want to come in, we can start where you are and help you get to where you want to be, regardless of where that may be. Some are going to be starters, some have been trading spreads, and they wanted to move into to, to iron condors and butterflies. We can certainly have those conversations. But just take advantage of your local resources. Uh, I, again, I think the local branch is a great place for you to come in. I meet with many clients. They bring their laptops in. And they want help customizing their screens and setting up some of these tools that Robert discussed. So if that's an opportunity for us to connect with you, uh, by all means, stop by the booth. We'll be more than happy to have the conversations, exchange contact information, even go through some of the material right there at, at the kiosk. Uh, as we mentioned, we do have the surveys. If you don't mind completing these surveys and just turning them in on your exit, uh, that'd be great. We'd certainly appreciate it. And don't forget, uh, there's this. 600 free trades. If you do decide to open up an account or bring in some additional deposits to your fidelity, to your existing fidelity account, we'll be more than happy to make sure that you're set up with this offer. We just need to make sure that you speak with one of the representatives at the booth so that your accounts and your information is properly noted so that you get credit for this. Uh, we certainly hope that you've enjoyed your time with us here today. And if there's anything more that we'll be able to assist you with, um, we'll be more than happy to have those conversations with you at the booth. But we certainly appreciate your time, and uh, we appreciate your interest. Have a great day.